The San Antonio Spurs as we know them today is one of the most beloved organizations across all professional sports leagues, not just the NBA. Over the years, they've won many championships and considered as the most consistent team in history, winning at least 50 games every season for 18 straight years and never missing the playoffs since 1998. When people think about the Spurs, they describe them as hardworking, classy, well-coached, great sportsmanship, all these positive things. Their superstar, Kawhi Leonard, represents all of these things very well. He's a top 5 player and the best defender in the league, but despite his greatness, Kawhi is the most humble and down-to-earth player in the entire NBA. He's quiet, reserved, and hardly ever complains to the refs, even if it's not going his way. He pretty much has no ego whatsoever, and he's the main reason why the Spurs as a team have created a great image in the last few years. However, this was not always the case. Believe it or not, there was a time when everybody hated the Spurs. Well, besides Spurs fans. This time period started around the time that Tim Duncan got drafted and ended around the time when they won their championship in 2014. There were three major reasons why nobody liked them, and honestly, those reasons were perfectly valid. During the mid-2000s, the Spurs were considered the most boring team in the league. In recent years, they're known for their ball movement and nice passing, but back then, their offensive game plan was very simple. Throw the ball to Duncan and let him do something. And he'd either score a basket with a plain and boring post move, or throw it to a three-point shooter. They did this for about a decade, and while they have been very successful, it was just not very fun to watch. Their offense did become way more exciting once Tony Parker and Manu Ginobili started getting better, but by that point, the Spurs already had the label of being a boring team, so it was hard to shake off that reputation. Additionally, the Spurs were so unwatchable that they were directly hurting the NBA's ratings. When they won championships in 2003, 2005, and 2007, the finals in those years had the three lowest ratings and television viewership in the last 30 years. This is also a good argument for why the NBA is not rigged. If they wanted to make more money, they would never let the Spurs keep winning titles. The second reason why they were so hated was due to some of the players' antics, especially from Ginobili and Bruce Bowen. Even though Ginobili was a great player without a doubt, he was known as the biggest flopper in the league. Opposing teams and players hated playing against him because he would end up falling down over the slightest bit of contact. These weren't the same kind of flops that happen today either. Most players today usually flop to exaggerate contact and try to get to the free throw line, but most of Ginobili's flops came from the defensive end of the floor where he would sometimes flail like a fish and cause a turnover for the other team. Bruce Bowen, on the other hand, was known for something completely different. He had a reputation for being one of the dirtiest players in the league. Superstars like Kobe and Vince Carter have accused Bowen of trying to intentionally injure his opponents by stepping under the landing space when they take jump shots. There are hundreds of clips that show evidence of Bowen putting his foot under players who are taking a jumper and subsequently injuring their ankles when they land. In 2006, Coach Popovich actually defended the way that Bowen was playing. He said that the players who complain about Bowen's antics are just frustrated from facing him, and he told him to not change the way he plays defense. I thought these quotes were kinda interesting since recently there was this whole incident with Zaza Pachulia injuring Kawhi's ankle, Popovich called Zaza dirty and that kind of play is dangerous and did not belong in the league. I guess you can take that for what it's worth. The third reason didn't really cause people to hate them, but it definitely did not help their popularity. The truth is, there just weren't that many interesting personalities on those Spurs teams. I know that Duncan is the greatest power forward of all time but he never generated the same level of interest as other superstars around that time, like Kobe, Shaq, Carter, Kevin Garnett, or Allen Iverson. Fans love big personalities, so Duncan did not really fit in that category. Despite having three Hall of Famers in their primes, the Spurs still weren't that popular because Duncan, Parker, and Ginobili never made that many headlines. They were just like three normal dudes who happened to be excellent at basketball. As the years passed, the Spurs slowly rebuilt their team and their reputation, 
By the early 2010s, their main players were getting older and slower. They no longer could rely on just their big three. They needed a new way to play, a new type of offense to help them score points and continue their dominance in the league. It was around this time when Coach Pop started implementing a more free-flowing offense that relied on multiple passes, cuts, and screens to get open shots. Basketball also started becoming much more popular as a global sport, and this new team-oriented approach from the Spurs brought along many new fans. The 2014 NBA Finals was the epitome of the new era Spurs, a team and playstyle that focused on teamwork instead of talent. Some have said that their games against the Miami Heat represented basketball in its purest form. Furthermore, the Spurs recently became a foundation for some great underdog stories. Guys like Danny Green and Jonathan Simmons were never given a chance before signing with the Spurs. They both made their way up from the D-League and now they're both huge parts of the team's success. So you can't help but root for them. The combination of the Spurs reinventing their playstyle, signing players with good character, and rebuilding their culture based on personality turned the perception of them around. And also, the fact that they have been a successful team for two decades, you just gotta respect them, because they earned it. Time is a powerful concept, and over the years, the fanbase has learned to give credit where credit is due. Even though the Spurs have been hated for a long time, there is no other team in history that went through this kind of transformation to become the NBA's golden boy. Led by their hardworking and humble leader Kawhi, and a coach who's now well respected by everyone in the league, the Spurs have reformed themselves and become one of the most likable teams in the world. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you next time.